Welcome to the MoVC Control Cabinet Products Basic to Intermediate Training. This is Session 15 and Lab Number 7. We're moving right along. We're going to spend some time right now doing a relatively easy lab. We're going to look at the CBG21A keypad and see how you can manage a MoviDrive technology with it rather than a PC. I think you'll find this a totally different experience, but it can be extremely handy in the field sometimes when you don't have a PC or when you don't really want to take the time to set one up. You just want to do a few quick things. The CBG21A is a very capable product, and I think you're going to find it very enjoyable. Now, word about motors for this lab. This lab works with either motor type. If you did the last lab with the MoviKit velocity control, then you're set up just fine just to continue with this lab. So as I've said before, if you're not coming straight from that lab, be sure at least that if you have an asynchronous motor, it's set up as lab three specified, that is BFC plus mode. And if you've got a servo motor, be sure it's set up as lab five specified, that was ELSM mode. No big surprises here, pretty much what we've done in our last lab. Again, I'll be using a servo motor. All right, a few quick pre-lab instructions. What do I want to tell you? I want to get you acquainted with the keypad. I just want to go over the controls before we dive in and actually do the lab. So let's go ahead and just do a quick tour of the keypad. If you've used some of our older keypads, you'll be pleasantly surprised with this one. It's a lot more intuitive. It works more the way most conventional devices work today plus it's full color. It's just a nice product. I really enjoy it. So let's go over the controls and just summarize what they are. First of all, the four unlabeled buttons making the top row are called the function buttons, and their purpose depends on what screen you're on. Now, how do you know what they do? Well, you look at the function row on the screen right above them. Right now, only two of them are activated. There's the escape function button on the extreme right, and the one next to it, which is actually the main menu button. So that's going to change as you go along. So look at the row right above and hit the function button and it will access whatever that function indicator specifies. Then there's a conventional navigation arrangement of arrows. No big surprise here, works exactly like every other device you've used. You can navigate amongst menus. You can also use these for changing numbers by selecting the digits with the left and right buttons and changing the digits with the up and down buttons. The OK button, which we call the Accept button, accepts choices. No big surprises here. The red and green buttons control the motor when you're operating in manual mode, so they do exactly what the labels say. They stop the motor or they run it. The I button is the Info button. That will bring up information under the right conditions. And that's pretty much it for the buttons. So very, very simple user interface. Let's look at the screen. This is the home screen. This is kind of what gets displayed by default. It shows the motor that's configured in the VFD and it gives its operation status. It'll give its RPM and current draw. It'll also show other things like the FCB that's in control at the moment and what the motor's doing. There are two functions defined on the home screen. The main menu, those four little squares, so that will bring up the main menu if you press the corresponding function button. And the escape function does really two things. It either exits something if you're in it, in other words, it escapes it, or it backs up a level. You use that for really those two purposes. This is the main menu. When we do the actual lab, we'll explore a number of these menus, but I wanna just give you a quick idea what the menu is all about. You navigate the menus using the arrows to highlight the one of interest and then press the OK button, the Accept button. The first one here goes to that home screen, which will display the motor status. Next is manual mode. Then there's the functional safety menu, the diagnostics menu, motor optimization, startup, running backups and restores, and accessing the parameters. Pretty straightforward. Pretty easy to understand. No surprises here. All right, well, let's go ahead and pause the video and do the lab. Okay, hope you found that interesting and enjoyable. And if you've used our earlier keypads, I'm sure you'll agree with me that the new CBG21A is really nice. Let's do our lab walkthrough now.
All right, well, we're going to use the keypad to work with our drive. This is a slightly different experience than you're probably used to, but I think you're going to like this. Now I have connected the keypad in place of my USM21A USB adapter. I've turned my VFD on. It's still in the MoviKit velocity mode from the last lab, but that's fine. That'll work with everything we're planning to do today. You can see right now it's kind of on the motor status screen where it's just displaying what the motor's doing. And at the moment, the motor's off, so it's not very exciting. But anyway, this is where we get started. All right, the first thing we're going to do is go to the main menu. And to do that, I'm going to hit the function button beneath the main menu symbol, those four little squares. And there is the main menu. And we can navigate to any of these eight choices by using the arrows and hitting the accept button in the middle to find what we want. The first thing we're going to do is run the drive in manual mode. This is something that you can do anytime to test a drive out. It's very useful. So I simply navigate to manual mode. I click the accept button. I have lots of choices here, and I'm going to go with just the simplest one, which is speed controlled manual mode. And actually in this particular configuration of the drive, which is ELSM, I can't do anything else. So I'm going to pick that one. It says, do you want to start manual mode? Answer is yes. And I'm all set to go. Now I have removed controller inhibit already. Let me turn controller inhibit off just to show you what it would say if it were off. You notice the little display in the corner changes from 04 to 01, that's the FCB. So that's controller inhibits FCB. If I turn controller inhibit back on, I go back to 04, which is manual mode FCB. All right, pretty straightforward. What I need to do first is set a speed. So I'm going to navigate down here. I'm going to hit accept and I can now enter a number by moving back and forth and using up and down to set my speeds. Notice I'm setting individual digits in different columns here. All right, I was supposed to set it to 500 RPM and it's already there. So I'll just leave it on that. I'll hit accept and we're now ready to go. Current direction is counterclockwise. Let me move up here and change to clockwise direction. And now I'm ready to run the drive and I'm going to do that by pressing the run button. And the drive is running. You'll have to take my word for it. I can't video the keypad and the drive at the same time, but it is spinning. I can change direction just by navigating to the counterclockwise button hitting accept, it reverses direction, it accept, it reverses again. Pretty simple. Stop halts my drive. And if I wanna now exit manual mode, I just hit the escape button. Do you wanna exit? Warning, it could run. Okay, that's fine. I'll hit okay. And I'm gonna hit escape again to go back to the main menu. So that's manual mode, pretty straightforward. Let's back up our drive to our keypad. This is something that's very handy to do. People often use keypads as backup devices. Also, if you have to configure a whole bunch of drives one after the other identically, it's handy to make a backup of the first one on the keypad and then take the keypad to each successive drive and do a restore. That allows you to create a lot of duplicate VFDs very quickly. So let's back up this drive. I'm going to navigate down to data management, what looks like a floppy disk, press accept, and I'm gonna pick inverter to keypad. That will do a backup. The other is a restore. I'm going to hit the plus symbol, and that's going to propose a file name. And I can change that, of course, but I'm just gonna overwrite the existing one that's already there. So I'll just confirm, yes, it's okay to overwrite it. And now it's ready to go. I have to press accept one more time, and now it's running the backup. This takes a few seconds. And now it's done. I'll hit escape to get back to the main menu. By the way, you can store multiple backups in the keypad, which is handy. 
And you can also plug a USB cable into the keypad and transfer those to a PC just by treating it sort of like a giant thumb drive. Pretty clever. Let's restore a backup. Let's just dump our backup right back onto our VFD. So I pick data management again, and I go the other way, keypad to inverter. Click accept, find the file I want. Click accept, it says, do you want to load it into the VFD? Be aware it could run automatically. All right, I'm going to be really smart and turn controller inhibit off just to make sure that doesn't happen. And I'm going to hit okay. And then I'm going to hit it again and it'll do the restore. And again, it will take a few seconds. And there we go, we're done. We hit escape twice, three times to go back to the main menu. So that's back up and restore. All right. Now let me show you how to go back to that status screen. If you wanna watch the drive when it's running, you go back to the start menu, the home screen right there. Pick actual values drive and there you go. You can see what the drive is actually doing. You can also use this screen to clear faults. There actually is a fault here, and I deliberately created one. I plugged my VFD into a transformer rather than directly into 460 volts. And because during the restore, it does a factory reset, it noticed that it didn't have all three phases, so it popped up a warning on that. And I've got a fault there. If you look in the top of the screen, you can see a little lightning bolt. There's also a function button lit up for fault, so you can hit that to pop up the fault message. And we can see it says something was wrong with the phases. Okay, no problem, I'll click reset and it clears it and escape. I'm clear of it and everything's fine. Drive is okay. So that's how you deal with faults. So you can reset faults with your keypad. We can also explore the fault memory by going back to the main menu and going to the diagnostics menu and then navigating to fault memory and we can see the various faults that are in memory. And there's the most recent one, that line fault. Of course, there are no others because when we did the restore, it kind of cleared the fault memory. But that allows you to explore the fault memories. You can also explore the IOs and just check that they're working by going to this selection here, digital inputs and outputs. And if you turn your IOs on and off on the control box. I'll turn DI04 on. You can see there I'm toggling it, DI05. So this is a great way to check that your IOs are communicating correctly. So that is just a quick run through the keypad. There are obviously many other things you can do with it. And I'm going to point out just one thing that I'll leave as a challenge for you if you want to explore, and that is doing a motor startup. The first thing you would have to do is go to the parameters so you could factory reset the VFD. So you'd pick parameter tree and then you would pick device properties and you would pick basic settings. Notice this kind of resembles Movie Suite a bit. And then you would pick reset device parameters and you would go ahead and you would pick delivery state. And I'm going to escape out of that because I don't want to do that here, but you would okay that. And then once you completed that, you would back up all the way to the main menu and pick startup. And this would allow you to do a motor startup. So I leave that as a challenge for you to explore. It's actually quite easy. Give that a whirl and you'll see that even if you don't have a PC and a USB adapter, you can still, if you have this keypad, pretty much do almost any important engineering task that you normally could be expected to do. And that's the end of session 15. That one was pretty easy. That was really to lull you into a false sense of security because session 16 is definitely a challenging lab. We're going to move up to a more sophisticated topic. We're going to recommission our motor in CFC mode, and we're going to look at measuring the load inertia and tuning the drive. See you then.